Mermaid friends, my name is Justine. I'm the Mermaid Seamstress and today we're going to talk about being smart and safe when swimming in the ocean. So right now I am home in the Bahamas enjoying my spring break and the ocean is literally right out my front door and I know you all have seen those beautiful pictures of mermaids swimming in the ocean and you know being majestic and interacting with wildlife and it's just absolutely beautiful and over the next couple of videos you're gonna see me swimming in the ocean that's right behind me um, but I wanted to make this video um, as a disclaimer to you that swimming in the ocean is not for the faint of heart and it is actually quite a bit different um, than swimming in flat water like a pool or uh, a lake and that swimming in the ocean is actually can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing um, and it is a lot higher risk so this video is going to be about some safety precautions that I take when I'm swimming out in the ocean um, and these are things that I do when I'm swimming just offshore so if you know, between the beach um, and the surf. These are not things, I mean, these are things that I do um, if I'm swimming off of a boat in deeper water, but that is something that shouldn't be done without proper certification and without a safety team. So that being said, don't try what you're about to see at home. So the first thing, if you're gonna be swimming in the ocean is you should be a strong swimmer. And I consider a strong swimmer to be somebody who's proficient in swimming, who's proficient in self-rescue techniques like floating on your back and treading water, and someone who has enough endurance to swim at least 300 yards without breaks. This is really important when you're swimming in the ocean because tiredness and fatigue is one of the most dangerous parts, not only about swimming, but especially when swimming in areas where you might have current. That being said, Ocean swimming is not for new mermaids or for people who need to depend on things like life jackets and flotation devices in order to swim and keep themselves afloat. So if you're a brand new mermaid or you're not a very confident swimmer, swimming in the ocean with your mermaid tail is not a good idea for you. The second most important thing about swimming in the ocean is having a proper monofin. These monofins are monofins that are made for free diving. They should be durable. They should be, uh, have great propulsion in the water. They should be easy to get out of either with safety straps or you should know how to get out of them really easily. Um, the ones that I would recommend would be the Finnis Rapid, the Mahina, um, the Mermaid Cat Shop monofin I've heard is great. Um, competitor monofins and any other monofins that are made specifically for um, free diving or ocean use. I do not recommend, I would never recommend swimming in monofins that are made as toys or for kids um, or that have like the neoprene foot pockets like the Fin Fun, the Magic Tail, the Sun Tails skins um, or ones that are made for children just because they don't have enough power um, and they can put you at a lot of risk if they're hard to get out of um, or they don't give you enough propulsion and you're swimming in the ocean. I mentioned in all of my monofin review videos which ones that I recommend for the ocean and which ones that I think should definitely not go in the ocean. So if you haven't seen any of my monofins, go and check out my monofin playlist. The link will be in the iCard and in the description box below. Another video that you can go and check out is a video by Aqua Mermaid who did a video on toy monofins versus professional monofins and the differences there. And that way you can determine if your monofin is okay for swimming in the ocean. If you're not sure, I would say don't do it. Um, just because you don't want to hop in the ocean and then have your monofin not work for you and you end up in an emergency situation where it can be hard for you to swim out of something. Tip number three, always swim with at least one other person. You should never swim alone, period, with or without a mermaid tail. But it's especially important in the ocean that you have somebody with you. Two people is even better, but the people 
should be able to save you. So they should be at least as strong a swimmer, if not a stronger swimmer than you are. Um, these can be people like your mer tender or your parents. Um, if you're at the professional level, um, you can hire a professional safety diver. Um, most underwater photographers will have a safety diver um, that they prefer and you should definitely ask them beforehand, will there be a safety diver on hand? It's really important that you're able to communicate with these people. So establish a way of communication, whether that be hand signals or arranging that you tell them what you're gonna do um, before you go underwater so that they know anything that you, you do that wasn't expected is a cause for concern that you might be in trouble. I personally, I use a lot of diving signals, so I let people know if I'm going like this, I'm asking a question, are you okay? And I respond, I'm okay. If I need to go up to the surface, this seems a little bit counterintuitive, but this is a diving um, thing. I need to go up to the surface, thumbs up, up. I need to go up. If something's wrong, something's wrong. And I point to whatever, my ears, my nose, um, you know, I'm choking, all of those things. Make sure that you've established a way of communicating with your safety diver. When you see people like Hannah Mermaid or Mermaid Melissa doing these incredible underwater shoots, they're out in the ocean, they're swimming with sharks, they're swimming with stingrays, they're swimming with dolphins, whatever. Most of the time, I'd say 99% of the time, they have a full safety team behind the scenes, behind them, keeping them safe. And their only job, those divers' only job is to make sure that they are safe and they are um, able to be rescued. They're keeping a really close eye on them. That should be their only job. Tip number four is know the area you're going to be swimming in. I have been swimming here at this particular location since I was a baby. So I know this area really well and it changes all the time. So I make sure that every time I swim, I go through the area with my, with my mask and my snorkel on just to scope it out. You should look for things like rocks, like wildlife, like coral, like docks, things that could potentially hurt you or your tail. Keep in mind of areas like drop-offs or other markers that you can, that you don't, that you, so that when you don't have your goggles on, if you're swimming without goggles, um, that you can find those things or you can locate when you're going too deep. And always make sure to come up and check where the shore is or um, to check where the shore is and where you are to the shore and do that frequently. It's very important. Um, another really important thing for knowing your area besides just the general features of it, is knowing the currents of that area. And that changes on a day-to-day -day basis. The currents that you really wanna watch out about are riptides, which are column-like currents that run perpendicular to the shore. And those currents pull you out to sea. Now, usually they're pretty narrow. So if you do get caught in a rip current, wave for help and swim parallel to shore to get out of it and then start swimming diagonally back into shore. The second type of current you wanna be aware of is tidal current. So this is when the ocean is coming in, the tide is coming in and out. That's going to affect the pull and push of the water. The safest time to swim generally, depending on your location, is going to be when the time is, tide is coming in. So water is going from low tide to high tide. And that means that the water most often is pushing you towards shore. But that being said, you do want to be aware of the fact that the water is getting deeper. So you might need to stay closer to shore as the tide comes in. The third type of current is longshore currents. Now these are currents that run parallel to the water and they take you side to side. Now the most dangerous part about these currents is that they can take you to places that you are not familiar with when you're swimming or they can take you over coral reefs. So for example, if you're swimming out here and the tidal current is pulling you this way, you can be pulled right over a coral reef and not realize it. 
So make sure that you're popping up every once in a while and you're checking the shore for your home base or your house or your umbrella, whatever it is, um, to make sure that you are staying in the same spot. And if you need to, take a break, swim back to where your spot is or get out of the water, walk back um, a little ways above your spot and get back in the water then, depending on how strong the current is. And the third current is structural currents. These are caused by objects uh, like rocks, reefs, and sandbars. Basically anything that is submerged in the water can affect the way that water flows around it. So you might be swimming in an area and you might have a really strong current that's pushing you in towards shore. But when you swim up to a dock, the water current is being reflected off of the dock and it might start pushing you out to sea. So just be aware of the obstacles in your area and the currents that they're causing. You can find out the currents by observing other people in the water. Where are they staying? What areas are they in? Um, where are they floating if they're floating anywhere? Um, you can ask your lifeguard. Um, they usually on the lifeguard stands have a beach watch area that'll let you know if there are any rip currents out that day, but the lifeguards will know what currents you should watch out for. Um, you can also do a Google search of your area and find out where are the strongest currents and what are currents that you should watch out for. Uh, a good website for this is going to be the NOAA website, N-O-A-A, -A, which is the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Association and they have all the marine forecasts and currents um, in most areas, so you should definitely check that out. Tip number five is be respectful of the wildlife. Don't try and pet or handle anything, especially if you don't know what it is. That can be fish, that can be starfish, it could be um, uh, mollusks. So like shelled creatures, don't pick up any shells um, off the bottom. You don't know what animals are in there. Also fish, you know, be, be aware that some fish can be poisonous. For example, I know that in the Bahamas, um, we have lionfish that have very toxic spikes. Um, and also keep in mind of your surroundings. You know, fish come in and out and some things like sharks, um, they might not be there when you start swimming, but they might show up over time. Um, and you just wanna be uh, uh, cautious of those things. They're not always dangerous, but if you ever feel like you're, un you're unsafe or what's around you is unsafe, make sure that um, you get out of the water quickly but calmly. Um, and that if it's something like a shark that you let a lifeguard know so that they can clear the area. Um, other more docile animals like turtles or manatees or dolphins might be curious and they might approach you. Don't reach out and touch them. Don't get too close to them. Let them, um, if you're swimming with them, keep your hands to yourself. Let them come and investigate you. Um, if you try and reach out and you startle them, they can get scared. Um, they can become aggressive. It's just, it's just really not something that you should do. I know Mermaid Melissa has quite a few videos um, where she's swimming with manatees and her thing is always letting them come up to her. Um, some animals are naturally curious and just be aware of what's the, the temperament of the animal um, before you let them get too close to you. It can be an awesome experience, but you don't wanna ruin it by um, reaching out and having them become scared or aggressive. You should, another piece of wildlife that you should highly respect is coral reefs. Coral reefs have a lot of nooks and crannies in them that creatures can be hiding in. Um, cor the coral itself is also a really integral part of the ecosystem and is very delicate. So if you're swimming by a coral reef, be careful not to damage it with your tail because um, it can also be damaging to you. So a good rule of thumb is that if you can reach out and you can touch it, you're probably too close. Um, that can be if you're swimming over it and you put your hand out in front of you um, or put your hand down. Just be really careful when you're swimming by coral reefs. And the sixth point that I want to make that you should be very careful of is self-care. Um, you know, just like any other sport, swimming takes energy and it takes 
a lot out of you. So you wanna make sure that you're staying well hydrated, that you're drinking plenty of water before, during, and after your swims or your photo shoots. Make sure that if you need to take breaks, take breaks. Take breaks to when you need to rest or grab a snack or reapply sunscreen. It's all really important um, to do that. And if you need to call it a day, if you're too tired, call it a day. Don't feel bad about that. Swimming when tired is an unnecessary risk that you don't wanna take. Um, and the last thing I'm gonna say is that if you, you don't, don't feel the need to hold your breath forever, right? You can get really beautiful shots at the surface of the water. They're going to look great, I promise. Um, you know, take breaths when you need to. Holding your breath for a really long time to impress somebody is putting yourself at unnecessary risk and it is not a good idea. That's all the tips I have for you. Um, you know, when you see me swimming in my other videos, you know, keep in mind of your own limits. And if you're not a good swimmer, if you're, if you're not a very strong swimmer, if you're not very confident in the water, if you don't know the area very well, don't swim in it with in, in your mermaid tail because you're going to be putting yourself at a lot of risk. I don't want to be responsible and I'm not responsible for anything that you try to do um, based on seeing me swim in my mermaid tail in the ocean. So keep that in mind. Comment down below if there's anything that I missed that you want to mention in the comments. Um, also let me know if you want to see any more mermaid tips and tricks or safety videos. Um, if you like this video give it a thumbs up and make sure to share it with all of your mermaid and not mermaid friends. If you want to see my adventures coming up in this beautiful, beautiful area in the Bahamas, make sure to click that subscribe button and the bell notification button to be notified when I release a new video. And don't forget to follow me on social media. All of my uh, social media handles will be linked in the description box below. And as always, be safe, happy swimming, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye fish friends.